Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch, and recently a very high profile game development framework was forked, and I've had a ton of requests to cover this, and I didn't want to right away, but I figured now enough time has gone by, it makes sense to cover it. And I'm going to just talk about game engine forks in general in this video, so you get an idea of when they do and they do not work out. And of course, the game engine we are talking about today is Pygame. Now Pygame is one of the most popular frameworks for developing Python games, and about a year ago there was a schism in the community, a pretty major Schism. Some of it revolved around uh, political gestures, but most of it was actually around uh, what the developer did and a developer conflict between people at the top. And this led to a fork. Now, again, this happened about a year ago. It resulted in the creation of Pi Game CE or Community Edition. Now, I didn't cover it a year ago because there's no way to know if this fork was going to become anything. You know, the forking a game engine is trivial. Literally, it takes seconds. It is done all the time, every single day. Uh, and even if you develop a rather large community right away. Keeping that community together is harder than you think. Building a successful project with developers contributing to it is a hell of a difficult task. Now it has happened. I'm going to talk about some examples of that in this particular video, but it's not as easy as you think. And honestly, until the community, uh, the new forked version proves itself as something more than the original and shows that it has a viable community behind it, it's not really news. But Pygame CA, CE actually pulled that trick off. So why did this actually happen? What was the disagreement that led to Pi Game CE being created? Well, it boils down to basically the person at the top, uh, the person who controlled the repository, controlled the PyPy, which is like a distribution page for um, Python libraries, uh, and the web, so the web page, the GitHub page, and the PyPy account were all controlled by one developer. And they wanted to do an update. The majority of the community wanted to do an update so that Python 3.11 uh, would be compatible with Pygame at the same time of the release. So that way, when people upgraded to new Python, Pygame would just work instead of having to build it from code, which was problematic. And I can actually say to that, it was a pain in the butt to build it from code, at least on Windows, which is my primary platform. So that's what they wanted to do. And basically, it boiled down to this led to a massive band wave. Uh, the person did not respond at all about these promotions. And there was just kind of a difference in where things wanted to go. Go. Now, apparently, there's also a bit of a political aspect to this as well, in that the person who controlled the web page used to routinely take it down in solidarity with various political causes for several days at a time without discussing it with the rest of the Pi Game community. Uh, that seems to be a lesser attributed aspect of this, but definitely uh, shows up later on in the comments here. So basically, the development team, majority of the major development the developers on the Pi Game team said, okay, screw this. We're just going to create our own project. But they did it silently. They actually just wanted to win and have it on its own merits. So they went ahead, they started this new project out, and then now, like a year later, it is a very good fork. So if you're looking to use uh, Pygame in any manner whatsoever, Pygame CE is a drop-in replacement. It has the most momentum behind it. If you go and check out on GitHub, by far more uh, updates to it, it does seem to be the new version of Pygame. So these forks can definitely work out, but what really helped in Pygame's example is that the majority of people from the original fork moved over. And that is a whole lot easier to get off the ground and running than if you just you know, start from scratch with all new developers. So that is why I didn't cover it when it happened, but I am covering it today because these things take a while to prove themselves. And the sordid drama, uh, that was uh, not really publicly known at the time. The developers kept things pretty quiet about why the schism was happening. They just went about, they did their fork and they announced it later. So this information all came out rather after the fact. So that's why I didn't actually cover the drama aspect of this either when it happened. But yeah, if you're looking for a uh, framework for Python game development, Pygame is definitely one to worth to check out. Now, forking of game engines is nothing new. We've got some great examples here. Mono game. Mono game is a port of XNA. So that is XNA was Microsoft's game development framework. But the thing is, did you know that Mono game was a fork? Mono game is actually a fork of two projects. One was based on Silverlight, I believe it was called Silver Sprite, and the other one used the Mono library naming conventions at the time, mono.xna. Those were both forked to create Mono game. But the funny thing here is Mono Game, which is hugely successful, had been used to make a several real big hit uh, indie games, also was forked to create another project, and that is FNA. Now, FNA was actually a fork of Mono Game way back in the day, and they've diverged in their goals in that FNA tried to be as compatible as possible with XNA, but not changing anything, whereas Mono Game was a complete uh, successor. So you can almost think of it as FNA is like the most compatible possible version of XNA 4, 
and Mono Game is XNA 5 Plus. So it was a, a kind of a friendly fork in a way because they have different goals. Now you do sort of compete for eyeballs and developers. So whenever a project is forked, it kind of can hurt all of the parties involved because you're kind of splitting your community a bit. But this one is a, for the most part, pretty friendly fork that exists for, uh, to serve a different technical need. And that can make a ton of sense. Now there's other ones out there as well. So example, Cocos 2DX, which I actually kind of mistakenly mentioned in my uh, recent uh, frameworks roundup. Uh, so I like Cocos 2DX, but it's not really getting developed all that much anymore. Uh, the Cocos creator is sort of like the lead project now. That's sort of when they've taken the Cocos framework and try to turn it into a full blown, well, they have turned it into a full blown game engine. Well, the main developers on that project focus on their library behind Cocos Creator. And Cocos 2DX was sort of left, you know, in the winds on that one. So we have a fork of it called Axmall. Now, Axmall uh, is a straight up fork, you see it's acknowledged right here, of Cocos 2DX4. Uh, and this is, uh, again, carrying on the legacy of Cocos 2DX. So the, this one is being actively developed and continued on. So in some ways, this is when the original intent of the project was somewhat abandoned, people moved over and started contributing to that. And you've got a decent solid number of contributors here. I don't think this project is quite as big as what we saw um, with Cocos 2DX, definitely uh, some bleed of developers there, but it is still very much being actively updated. Uh, and if you are looking for a successor to Cocos 2DX, uh, the Axmall game engine is probably where you want to go. Uh, another example that we have is when it comes to Blender. Now, Blender with version 2.8, I believe it was, decided to pull their game engine out of that project. So what UPPGE is basically uh, is a fork of Blender that adds the game engine functionality back in. So this is basically just a difference in opinion on where to take a product. One group said, no, we don't need this game engine functionality anymore. And another group said, oh yeah, we do. And they kept going and creating the UPBGE project. Again, another valid fork that has turned out quite well. On top of that, we also have B4Artist. Now B4Artist is not a game engine, but I figured I would mention it here anyways. This is a downstream fork of Blender. They keep compatible with Blender. So as Blender does new releases, they bring them into B4Artist. But B4Artist is all about providing a uh, more user-friendly version of Blender, and it's a different in design opinion. Some people will love what B4Artists have done for the UI. Some people will hate what B4Artists have done for the UI, and that's good. It gives options. It gives choices. This is a project that is a fork to offer different things, but at the same time, I do believe they also contribute upstream. So if they make a fix or something, they contribute it up to the parent repository, which is with forks. That is what you love to see is that the continuity of development between them all doesn't always happen, but I do believe in the case of b for artists, it happens that way. Now, another example we have is Oroho 3D. Now, Oroho 3D is a bit more of a tragic example um, because what happened here is uh, the the guy that owned the website in the GitHub, sort of like what happened with Pi Game. Well, he decided that this was now going to be a Russian-only game engine. And everybody that wasn't Russian, obviously, was not really in love with that idea. So what you're seeing here is we're looking at an archive version of it. So that's when the uh, schism happened, the community split. And so now we have uh, the Rebel Fork, or RBFX. Uh, this is Orho 3D uh, being carried on. As you can see, 171 contributors. Uh, we're having current code hits as well, uh, multiple versions, uh, like 15,386 commits. Very active development going on here. So that is uh, kind of uh, some of the more major game engine forks I can think of and the reason why they happen. Now there's a reason, again, I want to reiterate why this isn't always news or why I took a year to actually cover Pi Game CE, the community edition, uh, instead of covering it right away. It's because right away, it was nothing. When you fork a product, there is literally nothing there. A, a open source project lives and dies on the community contributions and the direction in which that project goes. Forking is not really a major accomplishment. Let me just pick a random open source project to use as an example. The Godot Game Engine, probably one of the most popular open source projects out there right now. Um, and uh, let's look. It has 21,000 and 100 forks. So 21,000 forks of this engine have happened. Some of those are literally just someone going to do a small change, they'll merge it upstream later on. Sometimes it's people taking the thing in a completely different direction. And if I covered all 21,000 of these forks, that would literally be all I did on this channel. So until a game engine actually succeeds on its own merits, it's not really newsworthy, regardless of the reasons why it was forked. So that is, ladies and gentlemen, why I am covering Pi Game Community Edition today, and why, if you read between the lines, I might not be covering other news. 
So when that other news potentially becomes newsworthy, I will definitely cover it on this channel. If it becomes a different project and if it succeeds and grows and, and thrives into a new and independent product from something that it forked, sure, I will cover it. But you got to get there first. And the truth of the matter is open source and open source community building is really hard. And that's one of those things. That's why a lot of these projects die on the vine within weeks or months or even years. So let me know what you think, comments down below, and let me know what you think of the movement on the Pi Game to Pi Game uh, CE. I think this is one of those examples, both are valid projects at this point in time, but I do think that uh, the Community Edition has overtaken Pi Game in general as the go-to for most people. So if you're looking to start a project with one of these two game engines, uh, let me know which one you would choose. All right, that's it. Uh, so that is sort of a brief history of game development forking and why I do and don't cover forks over time. That's it. I will talk to you all later. Goodbye.